Many of my friends have asked my point of view concerning the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Silence might be interpreted as consent. I don't want, I don't want silence to be consent. I'm going to talk about it for a minute if you'll stick with me. I'm Dave Reaver. I'm president of the Reaver Foundation, and we are a military assistance organization, and it is called a program Operation Warrior Reconnect. We are very, very strongly connected to active duty and retired military. All over the world, I'm sent as a resiliency trainer for the Comprehensive Soldier Fitness Program. I am a contractor with the Department of Defense. I served in Vietnam in 1969 for eight months, was wounded twice. The second wounding was so severe, it put me in the hospital for a year and two months. And 60 surgeries later, I'm sitting here talking to you with an opinion that I think the previous statements have given me a certain amount of qualification to talk about. That said, I'm going to say it up front and get it onto the table right now. If I were not a believer in Jesus Christ, if I did not have faith, I would call for the assassination of Vladimir Putin. But I don't call for that because I'm asking that God would do one of two things, remove or redeem him, one or the other. Remove him or redeem him. Uh, Psalm 109 has a statement. I, I think I'd like to read it for you. It's very simple, just verse 8. Let his days be few and let another take his office. That verse was actually abused a bit whenever Biden was elected as president of the United States, the weakest president we've ever had in our history. And in saying that, some of you just turned me off, I'm sure, and you're scrambling for the off button. But if you don't have the guts enough to listen to me, go ahead and turn it off because you'll be the same gutless leader that our president is. Here's what I'm going to say. I pray that God will redeem Vladimir Putin or remove him from his office. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. What is the arrow that flieth by day? That is missiles, my friend. The Old Testament, King James Version way of saying it. You'll not be afraid, listen to this for in verse 6, for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor in the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. There's a reward coming for what Putin is doing in Ukraine, but it's a whole lot bigger than we know. On the news today, there is now a stronger of a previously existing, now a stronger alliance between Russia and the largest population nation on earth. And India, the second largest population on earth, is now starting to align with China and make a triad of the largest populations on earth with an absolute insane madman, a dictator named Vladimir Putin. The fact is, communism, socialism, this whole concept of rule by power without authority given by people, which is called democracy, is that totalitarianism has never, read my lips, what's left of them, has never ended well. It ends with insanity and the continuation of and the ultimate end of mass murder. I'm going to say it again, mass murder. These dictators lose their ever-loving sanity. They go insane. And when they cannot control the people they are trying to dominate, they murder them. Stalin, Mao Zedong, Pol Pot, Hitler. You want me to go on with a list of names? Putin is right in the middle of them. He is headed toward that same exact destiny. Here's my call on it. We're headed to World War III. Without a divine intervention, our way of life will be forever altered in the next 30 to 90 days as we enter into these alliances against the United States of America. They hate us. They hate NATO. 
They hate anything aligned with the United States of America and a nation known to be Christian. As Putin pulls in every wild-haired idiot out there that wants to shoot a gun toward a Christian, he'll have an unlimited supply of enemy against the righteous. But I do want you to know that there are scriptures that kind of give a little bit of hope. Here's one I just love, and I think you'll enjoy it. God's, and it comes from the, the Message Bible. I think it's beautiful. God's a safe house for the battered. <laughs> Did you, he's a safe house for the battered. And that, that battered could not be a better description than the people in Ukraine. A sanctuary during bad times. The moment you arrive, you relax. You're never sorry you knocked. Sing your songs to Zion dwelling God. Tell his stories to everyone you meet. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. He tracks down. He tracks down killers. Verse 12. This is 9-11, Psalm 9-11. Sing your songs to Zion dwelling God. Tell his stories to everyone you meet. He tracks down killers. Yet he keeps his eye on us and registers every whimper and moan of us. Do you realize that? While God's taking care of us, he is tracking down Vladimir Putin. The day of judgment is coming. I cannot in my heart call for the assassination of anybody as Putin has done publicly for the assassination of the president of Ukraine. Well, I'm going to put all of it out there. God, remove him in any means. I don't care how it's done. Remove him or redeem him. And that would be the greatest story of God's redemption since Saul was the murderer of the church in the book of Acts. He tracks down killers, but he keeps his eye on us. Be kind to me, God. I love this. I've been kicked around long enough. Once you've pulled me back from the gates of death, I'll write the book on hallelujahs on the corner of Main and First. I'll hold a street meeting. I'll be the, the song leader and we'll fill the air with salvation songs. I'm trying to tell you, it's dark. Sometimes it's not just dark. It's a black horizon of horror with terror, missiles, being kicked around and abused. But God tracks down killers. Don't think for one moment Vladimir Putin is going to get by with it. I'm Dave Reaver, and I approved of this message.